today we're going to be discussing Profinet. Profinet's a very popular communication protocol used in industrial networking and in automation applications. It's widely used in factory, process, and industrial automation. If you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat box. I'm Maria Lamoni, sales manager here at ICP DAS USA. I also have Mohsen and Faiz from technical support with me. At the end of the presentation, he's going to be showing you Profinet with SCADA software. We'll first introduce the Profinet protocol and its features. Then we'll show you the differences between Office Ethernet and Profinet. We'll also show you some of our Profinet gateways and I.O. modules for your automation needs. ICP DAS was established in 1993. Our headquarters is located in Shinshu, Taiwan. ICP DAS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We have over 200 R&D engineers and we work closely with them to add new features to our products, develop new products, and to support our customers. Most of our products are ROHS compliant, which means they're lead free. We have our ISO 9001 certification, which ensures we meet product statutory and regulatory requirements. So first, what is Profinet? Profibus protocol on Ethernet protocol is Profinet. It uses Ethernet instead of RS-485 protocol to access the media, like in the normal Profibus. The media access protocols are implemented on top of Ethernet protocols. Profinet is a new standard for industrial networking and automation. It connects devices, systems, sales, and it helps to make safer and with more high, higher quality uh, manufacturing systems. It integrates existing systems and equipment and also uses the Ethernet so you can use them in your applications. Profinet is very advanced and it's an Ethernet based solution for networking and it helps to connect things like sensors, actuators, subsystems, and production units and equipment like PLCs, DCS, and IT systems. Profinet deals with the conflicting demands of IT and the plant floor automation and it uses three communication services. Standard TCP IP is used for non-deterministic functions such as parameterization, video, audio, transmissions, and data transfer to higher level IT systems. Real-time Profinet RT uses the TCP IP layers and bypasses it in order to give deterministic performance for automation applications in the 1 to 10 millisecond range. This represents a software-based solution for typical I.O. applications including motion control and high performance requirements. Isynchronous real-time Profinet is a signal prioritization and scheduled switching delivers high precision synchronization for applications such as motion control. Cycle rates in the sub-millisecond range are possible with jitter in the sub-microsecond range. This service requires hardware support in the form of readily available ASICs. Ethernet has been used on the factory floor for almost as long as it's been in the offices. But it's mainly been used for intercell communications and not for actual I.O. There's never been a standardized way to implement it until Profinet. However, such installations had tended to be specific and there were some difficulties like the office type of Ethernet couldn't deliver real-time responses needed for industrial I.O. The office type of Ethernet couldn't be used for advanced motion control. Um, office Ethernet you know, has a hard time tolerating physical conditions found in manufacturing like dusty environments, hot, humid, or corrosive. Also a strong electromagnetic interference. These difficulties that I mentioned can be overcome uh, which led to industrial Ethernet and Profinet. Here you can see the main difference between these two automation systems. One is based on Profinet and 
Profinet, all the field devices and monitoring devices are on one network, and there's no need to have a bridge. Because Profinet is fully compatible with the regular kind of Ethernet, it can reside and be fully operational on a single network cable alongside other industrial Ethernet devices that are based on standard Ethernet. So that's very convenient in your applications so you can have many different kind of devices including computers and Ethernet IP and Modbus TCP devices all on one network. Coexistence doesn't mean the systems are compatible. It only means it's possible to use the same network infrastructure to support multiple industrial Ethernet devices. Protocol differences mean that industrial Ethernets cannot communicate with each other except by using additional hardware like protocol converters. Profinet has become popular and it's it's able to operate in harsh and extreme industrial environments and at the same time it ensures a high network speed. Users have field access to their devices simply over their network so you can do maintenance and service your devices from anywhere you like. It also lowers costs for production and quality data monitoring. It also provides safety, energy management, and IT integration. In order to meet needs of Profinet devices, we provide a variety of Profinet gateways and I.O. devices. The I-7580 Profinet converter converts Profinet to serial networks. It's a Profinet I.O. device with real-time functionality that supports RS-232, RS-422, and RS-485 serial interfaces. Users can choose one of these serial communication interfaces and it's easy to allow users to take a serial device to Profinet network including serial remote I.O. devices, sensors, actuators, HMI devices, barcode readers, and RFID products. The PFN2042 is a 16-channel digital output I.O. module designed for Profinet I.O. devices. It has 16 channels of isolated digital outputs and is suitable for various industrial applications. You can access and configure it by using the GSDML file in any Profinet engineering tool. The input types are 3.5 to 50 VDC and cyclic time is 1 millisecond. We provide a generic GSDML file for this. The PFN2060 is another Profumet I.O. device we carry with six isolated digital inputs, six relay outputs, and it can trigger alarms, fans, heaters, and you can also use it to monitor where devices are working. It can communicate over Ethernet, and it supports power on value and safe values, so you can, um, if the system should be shut down and the power should be lost, you can configure it so it it can have all the digital inputs as on or off based on your set values or uh, the safe values. Every module within a Profinet network has three addresses, a MAC address, an IP address, and a device name. Because Profinet uses TCP IP and a MAC and IP address, uh, MAC devices, MAC addresses change if the device is replaced. So the IP address is a form of dynamic addressing. You can replace um, a Profinet device and use the same IP address as the previous device had. Because there's a need for a fixed address in Profinet, that's why you use a device name. So at this time, I'm going to switch over to to Mosin, and he's going to show us. IndieSoft SCADA software with Profinet. Welcome to OPC webinar. Uh, I am Mohsen Faiz from uh, Technical Support in ICP DAS uh, USA. Um, here I'm going to briefly cover uh, OPC communication. Um, first, uh, let's uh, see what is OPC. Actually, OPC stands uh, for uh, OLE for process control and OLE means object linking and embedding. Actually OLE is um, uh, a communication uh, protocol in Windows which uh, is uh, based on COM or COM uh, communication. 
And OPC itself is a um, series of standard and specification which we can use in our SCADA system, uh, uh, for example, Indusoft, to communicate with other uh, specific devices. Uh, in Indusoft, OPC is uh, optional as uh, we have over 240 channel drivers for different brands and different devices, different protocols. Uh, by the way, if there is, uh, there is a feature or there is a protocol which is not uh, in Indusoft, uh, there is an option and there is a possibility that you can use OPC in Indusoft. For more information about uh, OPC, you can visit this opcfoundation.org uh, website which has a very good and uh, useful information about o OPC. So, um, regarding the OPC itself, uh, as we use it in our uh, SCADA system, we can think of it as a translator. And, um, for example, if we have our SCADA system, for example, uh, here in Dusoft, we could have different uh, kind of PLC or other devices at the other side, uh, Allen Bradley or it could be also even a protocol like Modbus or any device. And um, OPC can be a translator for us. And the only language we need to, uh, to have or to, to know is um, how to speak with this OPC server. The other side will be handled by OPC itself. We don't need to be worried about it. And uh, we just need to talk to OPC server for example, if uh, here it's a, a German or French language, uh, and if we just know English, we just need to speak English with OPC server. The rest will be done by OPC server itself. Uh, Indusoft can be a server client uh, or client uh, only client. Actually, Indusoft uh, can be OPC server as well. We have uh, different kind of drivers for OPC in Indusoft, which is OPC uh, DA, UA, .NET, XML, slash DA, and DDE. Um, let me go to Indusoft, um, let me close this, and uh, <coughs> if you just go to help, uh, there is a very powerful and good uh, help in Indusoft. In the um, here in the communication with other devices, uh, you can see uh, good information and more information about uh, different uh, drivers for OPC. For example, OPC DA is uh, when uh, Indusoft is a client and you want to talk to a server. Uh, from Indusoft. Um, to add um, this uh, communication driver to your project, uh, it's very easy in the Project uh, Explorer uh, uh, section in your uh, Indusoft project in the communication tab here you can easily um, add drivers um, here, if you just uh, right-click on the drivers and hit this uh, pop-up window, you can see we have many a bunch of uh, uh, drivers for different protocols and brands, and at no cost. And um, you can uh, use it. And my suggestion and my recommendation is to use these channel drivers rather than OPC because um, downloading or getting OPC server uh, has additional charge. By the way, if there is a feature or as we discussed, if there is a protocol which is not included in this um, protocol and drivers we have, we can easily use our uh, OPC uh, drivers here and uh, to do so, just click on it and insert and here easily uh, and uh, very uh, easy, you can configure your communication to your OPC server. After 
installing and after downloading and installing or buying your uh, OPC server, you need to identify it here. Different kind of uh, OPC server could be here. You just select what you uh, want to communicate. If your um, OPC is uh, in the remote uh, computer, uh, you can put your, the IP address of that computer here. And uh, you can also add description. Um, here um, in the, this table, in this um, section in tag name, you uh, insert the tag uh, which you have in your Indusoft project. And here in the item, you will um, specify the path uh, to the variables which you have in OPC server and you want to uh, connect uh, these uh, variables to your Indusoft tag. You just click on uh, this section, you will have this option here, OPC, uh, OPC bro Browser, and um, because I, I have not installed any OPC server on my system, it's deactivated, but if you install it and uh, have it on your system, it, it is um, activated and um, you can browse the OPC server and choose your uh, variable in your OPC server. Here, um, in, the, in this slide, um, I, I have a picture here for you that which, which shows you how you can uh, address a variable in uh, your um, OPC server. And as, as I said, here you have the tag name in Indusoft, and that's all. The communication is established and you are, you are talking to your OPC server. So um, that was a brief um, um, intro introducing of uh, OPC server and how you can use um, Indusoft uh, with OPC. And for Profinet also, you can use uh, OPC uh, to communicate, um, which was the Maria webinar today. And uh, easily with OPC, you can uh, communicate over Profinet as well with Indusoft. Okay, um, thank you very much for your um, uh, attention to this OPC webinar. Um, okay, if you have any uh, questions at this time, please enter them into the chat box. So far, we don't have any questions. And uh, if you don't have any questions at this time, you can always contact us by email or phone, and we'll be happy to help you. Or if you're working on any projects, uh, please contact us at any time, and we'll be happy to help you.